this microwave makes games. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of That Cyber Channel. I'm Dan Cyber. And I'm the Game Salmon, back again because somebody took the microwave out of the closet. I don't know what you want me to say. I've been apologizing for an entire week. I just, I needed the microwave for Jerrica. I pay her in appliances. Well, now here we are again. So let's talk about Dave Microwave's Games, a low poly developer who has created a ton of horror games that you've probably seen on YouTube. Dave Microwave Games has an extensive library of games ranging all the way from Spongebob horror to his own unique creations. But before we start, I need to send this microwave back down with this wonderfully built height-adjusting desk. Ad time! 2020 has been a heck of a time. Since we're gonna be stuck inside for longer, it seems, you should at least have a desk that is high quality and keeps you from sitting forever. Flexispot, our sponsor for today, was kind enough to send me over one of their E1 55 inch height adjusting desks. And it is freaking awesome. I'm recording on it right now. Not only is it easy to go from standing to sitting, this thing is insanely well built, which is comforting to know when I need to hide from my ceiling dragon's fire attack. I've personally been using my new desk to function as my writing workstation. It allows me to sit for a bit and move around when I need to do my writing pacing. I'm probably not getting my deposit back for this carpet. My landlord probably watches this, so... Uh, whoops. They also have a variety of different accessories to make your office workspace a bit more livable. So check them out by going to flexispot.refr.cc slash dancybert, yes, the actual spelling of my name, and get $15 off your order when you spend $150 or more. Trust me when I say you shouldn't invest in a cheap desk. We had $75 desks, and they fell apart the moment we moved. So check them out, link in the description, and you can easily protect yourself from your ceiling dragons. And add! Dave Microwave Games is yet another developer who puts Scott Cawthon to shame when it comes to releases. To this date, he has released nearly 30 games since he started in 2016. You really got a thing against Scott Cawthon. Oh. Oh! Well, when your day job is all about FNAF and then you turn over to your side project and that's all about FNAF fan games and your entire world just goes around in circles around FNAF. Okay, well, while Dan gets some pent up frustration out of his system, let's not waste any time and start talking about some of Dave Microwave's games classics. Is he gonna be okay? And another thing, I just promised that if I hit 100,000 subscribers, I double up on FNAF fan games. So hopefully everyone has subscribed, hit the bell, and... Wait, wait where, where am I? Oh, oh, right. Welcome to Dave Microwave Games. Thank you, Jerrica. Our first game of the video is Dora is Dead. Hey, just like the rest of my childhood innocence. Neat. We're specifically playing the remastered version that has a nicer look to it. The reason we wanted to cover this specific game is because it's a game from early in his career, so seeing where this game is, and where he is now, is really incredible to see. In this game, you play as Swiper. No swiping! I, as was saying, you play as Swiper. No swiping! Okay, is this gonna be a thing? Is this going to happen every time I say Swiper? No Okay, well, you play as Swiper as you wake up in a random warehouse where you need to find the key to escape. This game has a simple premise, but it can be a little confusing. The map really doesn't have too many landmarks that stand out, and most of the time you just kind of move around until you find what you need. Fortunately, those items have the, hey, this item is important glow. Gotta appreciate that from time to time. Well, it wouldn't be a horror game if you weren't attacked by something terrible. In this game, you'll be attacked by... Same. But like, in a good way. Yeah, like a, oh, I hate it, but it's good because it's horror, you know. Yeah, 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 right there with you. As terrifying as she is, Dora isn't that big of a threat. Dora will know where you are at all times, but she is easy to outrun. Just nab the right key and make a break for the gate. I mean, you are playing as Swiper. No swiping! Okay, cool. Yeah, I forgot. I mean, Dan. Swiper. No swiping! Let's just move on. 
As we mentioned in the Micro Horror Arcade video, which you can click that i-card there to watch, Dave released the Dave Microwave Games Trilogy alongside Micro Horror's Trilogy, three short horror games bundled together. The first game to quickly talk about is A Real Party, mostly because it's a rather quick game to beat. A Real Party follows an off-brand version of the Scooby-Doo Gang. Invited randomly to a party, you quickly find yourself in a dark and spooky mansion. You know, as you Scooby-Doo. Now, if you couldn't tell by now, this game is pretty basic. Text on the left and the gang on the right. It's a straightforward choose your own adventure game with 21 different endings. There are large varieties of different decisions to make, but if you're expecting any animation, you'll be disappointed. Yeah, this game is much more of a reader than the rest of these games, but while there's no animation to speak of, the writing is pretty funny. Though, YouTube probably wouldn't be happy with some of the language. Papa YouTube does not approve of this game. There's not much more to talk about. It is fairly funny, but the main substance of this trilogy is more in the other games. But there is a good lesson to be had here. Never trust random holes. Resulting actions will need to be massively censored. Do you like hats? Do you like hats to an unhealthy obsession? Well, then you just might be a Rungi Roo. The next game in the trilogy is Rungi Roo, and it was definitely the hardest of the bunch. I mean, it got pretty close to lanky lonky levels of frustration. Lanky and Rungi are here. Ooh, I heard my favorite fish is back. I and I want the hair to haze. Oh, um, he's dead now. That's okay. We'll stay for the Bavaria. Great, now I need to plan that now. Runky Roo can be a really difficult game if you're not patient. You play as a poor soul who went to investigate his secret lair and got caught. You now must get your hat and escape before he comes for your hat again. Hey, uh, you usually wear hats, don't you, Sammy? What are you implying? Well, I'm just worried about your hats. I mean, you occasionally wear beanies. Implying? Well, aren't you concerned about your hats? I think I'll be fine. I agree. Nothing could go wrong. Totally not panic wearing all my hats. What? What makes Rungi Roo so problematic is that once you are seen, uh, you're screwed. Rungi Roo is very fast, so if you think you can escape him, you'll only find... Just wouldn't be one without it. Anyway, this game requires a ton of stealth, but once you learn the general spawn places of the key and valve wheel, you can escape rather quickly. It's definitely the most challenging of the three games, but very possible to escape the blob of flesh. Dave's words. It makes this game just a little more gross. The third game in the trilogy is Cockeye, and I think it's my absolute favorite of the bunch. Just booting up this game, you get this fantastic aesthetic of old retro gaming. I mean, just look at this game, it looks amazing! Cockeye puts you in control of an arcade employee as you test out the new Cockeye machine that you got, knowing it was clearly haunted. Every horror protagonist makes such great decisions. I guess it's just Darwinism at work. In order to make sure everything is safe, you must play Cockeye to trigger the haunted virus and test the failsafe. This of course goes poorly as you need to get him out of two more machines after he escapes. What makes Cockeye so great is because of the variety of gameplay in it. While the main part is avoiding Cockeye, like many of the other games, each arcade machine has a small mini game that you must play through to move on. The best of course being Squirrel Exterminator. It isn't too difficult to win, just some stealth combined with a little rodent control. There are two endings if you manage to hit the failsafe or not. An ending that, uh, is an entire novel. An entire novel about your absolute failure. Right? Glad you didn't do that. Why do I smell burning of savage burns? Ever dream of traveling the stars or exploring the depths of the seas? Well, let's crush those dreams with instilling an intense case of fear with Strange Terror from Beyond the Stars and its sequel, Strange Terrors from the Deep. These two games are a lot bigger than a good chunk of his other work. The game starts with a monster getting let loose on your space station and again in your underwater base. It's then up to you to try to save your fellow crew members. Or ditch them and blow up the station. 
These games have many different endings based off of what you do in each game. To achieve any ending, you'll be going on a pretty lengthy scavenger hunt to find various tools and keys to gain access to the various exits. So while you'll need a screwdriver and a quarter to call a rescue team, you may need the armory and steam control card keys to get access to weapons. Or you could just blow up the station! Finding all the tools you'll need will definitely take a few attempts. You'll spend your first couple of tries just figuring out the map and where everything spawns. There are signs and such to help you get around, but it only gives you a general direction. After a few attempts though, you can learn it fairly easily. The first game includes quite a few different monsters to go up against, though most of them kind of function the same. Sure one has a laser gun, but mostly you just need to outrun them. The second game though takes the base difficulty and kicks it up 5 self-destructs. Monsters in the second game actually have abilities to help them hunt you down. Some can summon tridents to block paths, while others have companions that can hunt you down. It's definitely a lot more threatening, but you do have a few tools at your disposal to help. Spread throughout the levels are gadgets to save you, like teleporters that take you to a whole different room. Be careful though, because you can randomly teleport next to the monster. I'm not bitter. Maybe a little. Though, that particular event was caused by my character choice. The second game gives you a lot more options. You have the selection of two different characters, Jay, aka Jayski Bean, aka Micro Horror, and Alice, who might be referring to someone I don't know. Jay has a personal teleporter, which most of the time worked except for that one particular case, but a weaker flashlight. Alice has a stronger flashlight, but only gets one gadget spawn on the map. So take the teleporter. Always, who needs light when you can randomly move your entire existence somewhere else? Strange Terror from the Deep also has a few other modes as well. You have classic, hardcore, old school, which looks like beyond the stars, and custom mode. Custom mode allows you to play against any monster you want including the Jazz Salmon. Oh Lord, here we go. What's up all you cool cats and kittens? It's me, the Big Daddy-O himself, the Jazz Salmon, bringing you 24-7 jazz. Seven days a week. I think we just leave. Five days a year. I can't get enough of that jazz, baby. Rude. But hey, it's worth pointing out that not only do I have a monster in here, but I also voice a character. That always gets locked behind doors. Hey, you, can you get me out of here? The door malfunctioned and now I'm stuck in this room. I, uh, well... What? Does Dr. Salmon not understand how locks work? I can't help it if they keep getting jammed! Uh-huh. Regardless, these games are rather big and honestly some of Dave's best work. If you're looking for that classic horror vibe, these are definitely games you need to check out. Dave has created a ton of games and collaborated with many other creators as well. So what do you do when you have tons of characters at your disposal? You Infinity War them? Exactly! Our next game is Dave.exe, featuring a wide variety of characters from games Dave has worked on. Now, we've talked at lengths about Micro Horror and Dave's various work together, but it's worth bringing in another character into the conversation. Padre Snowmizzle. Padre Snowmizzle has been working together on Dave's games, and we really see him as a big part in these next two games with a lot of the character models and other various elements. Dave.exe has you take control of Dave Microwave himself as he must help one of his oldest creations, Barry, repair the time stream. Which of course means things are going to go really well. And this, kids, is why you should never mess with time. Now, if you've played Dead by Daylight, this game might look awfully familiar. It is very similar in the fact that you must interact with multiple machines to escape. Just in this particular case, you need to get soda for Barry. You know, a more serious crisis. While you grab the soda, you'll need to avoid a ravenous monster from the Daveverse. This game can be really tough. Your stealth game needs to be at its peak in order to get around. Most monsters are faster than you, so outrunning them isn't really an option. Instead, you need to outsmart them. Around the map, you can find tunnels to crawl through and bookshelves to cut off paths. These will be absolutely key in saving your microwave butt. It is important to know that this game is in a very early alpha form. Only one level and a handful of monsters are available in the demo. Fortunately, I was able to play the most recent version, which is great because the original version I had featured some really rough controls. The newest version, though, functions a lot better so you can move around while still keeping an eye out for monsters. 
it's great to see this kind of improvement from each version. You can tell there's a ton of stuff planned for this game. There's already a shop with a few cosmetics, including Handsome Dave. Wow! You're so violently handsome it makes me want to throw you straight to the monster. This game is showing a ton of promise. Hopefully this could be one game that has multiplayer down the road, similar to Dead by Daylight. But for now, we'll just need to take solace in the fact that we get to kill the creator that's killed us so many times. That's for Rungiru, you son of a toaster oven. Let's get to the game I know a lot of you are excited for. It was one of the most requested games to cover once I announced this video. Dear Cybernauts, let me introduce you to Around the Clock at Bikini Bottom, a SpongeBob horror fan game that Dave and Padre were kind enough to let me play before its release. Dave has been known for making a variety of different horror games featuring other franchises. We talked about Dora and Scooby-Doo, but Dave has also created a handful of other SpongeBob horror games. This includes 3 a.m. at the Krusty Krab, 6 a.m. at the Chum Bucket, and 3.30 a.m. at Floater's Cemetery. These three games are rather short with basic scavenger hunt mechanics. Those games were incredibly popular on the YouTube platform, with people like Markiplier and others playing them. Well, fast forward to now, and we're about to get an absolutely massive game that greatly builds off them. It features a full story as SpongeBob and friends must stop aliens from stealing and cloning the residents of Bikini Bottom. It's even complete with an episode title card at the beginning, giving the most authentic SpongeBob viewing experience. Throughout the levels in the game, you'll get the chance to play as many of the characters from the series. Each level features a new villain and objective you need to accomplish in order to escape. These range from chase scenes to scavenger hunts to straight platformers. The diversity in this game is insane, but it doesn't feel like you need to learn vast complex mechanics in each. The controls are always the same and each new enemy is easy enough to learn, assuming you pay attention. Oh no. Go ahead. I know you want to. This is the last time we're doing this bit. What I think makes this game really exciting though is the optional collectibles. Each stage has various different collectibles and challenges you can perform to unlock extras, which as a man who's been collecting platinum trophies like it's my job, I'm all about. I am a trophy collecting beast. You want to talk about how you got that Fall Guys trophy? Not a word, Cybert, or I'll have Jerrica put Freddy back in your closet. Please don't. There is one critique I have of the game. I promised Dave some criticism on stream, so here you go. While this game plays incredibly well and is a ton of fun, the difficulty spikes are pretty brutal. Going from the first level Glove World to SpongeBob House is a really big spike. The game even calls it intense. Now, while I'm one for a challenge, if beating every level in order unlocks the rest of the map, this could get challenging. Squidward, SpongeBob, Mr. Krabs, and Patrick all have levels that happen at the same time, 10 p.m. If all four of those need to be done in order to get to 11 p.m., there could be some drop off. I do think this is an easy fix that doesn't require a ton of rework because God knows how long these guys have been working on this thing trying to get it into your hands. If you had the chance to choose what single level to do at 10 p.m. to get to 11 p.m., more casual players can continue the story while completionists can go for the Goofy Goober Gold. Now, this is assuming that's how it'll all work. The alpha I played had all the levels unlocked, so who knows if that'll be the plan in the future. This game is easily shaping up to be a great game. I know I'm ready to dig my teeth into this. I'm definitely going to go for that 100%. I'll have this game completely done before Cybert over here. I will not contest that. Jerrica, stop. Oh, really? Please. He couldn't touch me. Oh my god. Well then, Cybert, it's on. It's not. When Around the Clock drops this year... Both of you, stop. I concede. Salmon versus Cybert, Around the Clock Race 2020. I'm leaving. We'll have posters! It'll be the GDQ of Micro Indie Gaming! Where did he go? Well, looks like Cybert chickened out. Weak! 
Dave has made a ton of games in his lifetime as a developer, and each game builds off the last, making each new experience bigger and better. You can pick up all the games that we talked about and more on his itch.io, and again, it's name your own price. That is insane for the amount of game you can get. So please be sure to click on the link below in the description to check them out. <sighs> All right, closet time. Great, cool. Good luck with that. I'm out before things get any weirder. Oh, oh, thanks, Salmon. I guess we'll just play Fall Guys later then. <sighs> Let's do this. It's nothing. I don't know what the next video is going to be about. Jerka, add 50 explosions! Thank you everyone for watching. I know my closet may have let you down, but I still have to figure out what's next. A special thanks to the Game Salmon for joining me once again, Jerrica for helping me edit, and Alyssa B. Crazy and Nick D. Wise for running camera. And can't forget Elizabeth Mello and all my Patreon patrons. Don't forget to subscribe to myself and the Game Salmon, and until I figure out what's next, Cybered out.